This is the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. The same song, the second verse. The Bison come away as winners in overtime for the second consecutive game. Lance Dunn, the hero from one week ago with a 25-yard scamper on the first play in the extra session for the Bison as they win in a track meet over Eastern Washington. Hello and welcome into the Farmers Union Insurance Bison football pregame show. I'm Alex Egan. He is Ryan Gellner and it was an interesting <laughs> game. We didn't think that the Bison could win a track meet against Eastern Washington, but they pulled it out. Stop me if you heard this one before. First play from scrimmage for the <laughs> offense in overtime, 25 yard run. It's not only happened once, it's happened twice now for NDSU. But this says a lot about the Bison. It says a lot about this football team to be able to play in two very different style games. And maybe most importantly, and certainly most importantly, to come out on top in two of those football games. Two very different football games. But in the end, two big wins for North Dakota State. It was a lot of offense on display for both teams. And the Bison actually did pretty well in the first half. They got 21 points. They limited Eastern Washington to just the 14. And it was really the tale of two halves. The second half, Eastern Washington comes out. Uh, they start to get their, their ball rolling a little bit more. And it was, it was an interesting game, to say the least. But the Bison, they come out ahead. If we could take a look at some of those highlights from last week, it was just insane you see King Frazier getting the scoring started last week he was the guy who ended the game the week before yeah he played on that weak ankle but it looks pretty good right there as he gets into the end zone early for North Dakota State I've heard some good things about King and his progress this week uh, with the injury the ankle injury we didn't see too much um, out of him in practice this week Jeff Ilias they got the tight ends involved uh, against Eastern Washington, and then, of course, Easton Stick with a career day, over 250 yards passing. He was on point all game. It was very nice to see him. Yeah, he still only had 17 completions uh, on 27 pass attempts, but it was nice to see him kind of get some of those going. And then, of course, Lance Dunn had the big 40-yard. This was a 40-yarder earlier in the game before he melted away the, uh, the overtime there. So let's take a look at some of the numbers from last week's game. It, some ugly numbers, so, uh, depending yes. on what you look at. Right, so total yards, I mean, it was a track meet. We weren't expecting to see these kinds of numbers from this Code Green defense. And we'll talk a little bit about <laughs> the Code Green defense uh, coming up in the next segment. But 74 total plays on offense for NDSU, 75 total plays on offense for Eastern Washington. The turnover battle goes in the favor of NDSU. But that number down there at the bottom is a number that will make coaches' heads spin. 13 penalties for 137 yards. Now, I know Chris Kleiman said uh, on Monday that they talked to the league office about some of those calls and what they heard back. They were pleased with what they heard back, so there's going to be a, a little bit of a discrepancy there. Some of those chop blocks that were called, I think, were a little bit confusing to some of those guys. But 13 penalties, 137 yards, that is insane. It is uh, too much for North Dakota State. You can't have that many penalties and expect to win games. That's a big difference today. Yes. If NDSU has that penalty number today, it will not be pretty for the Bison. All right, let's take a look at the schedule for the Bison. Obviously, Iowa coming up today on ESPN2. We'll be walking you right up to kickoff, so don't worry. We've got you covered. That is an 11 o'clock kickoff, so about 57, 56 minutes from now. Stay with us and then flip on over to ESPN2 and then We've got you the rest of the way as the Bison take next week off. They'll have another open Saturday, just like they did after the Charleston Southern and game. And that's big. That is big because you get into the gauntlet of Missouri Valley play, and the Missouri Valley um, has already become kind of a jumbled mess, and we're not even into conference play yet. So it'll be a little bit interesting to see how things shake out this, this weekend and the next weekend as well. A lot of eyes on North Dakota State today. Also a lot of eyes on Northern Iowa today. Northern Iowa takes on Eastern Washington, and that is a huge game standing-wise already at this point. It has playoff implications here in week number three or four, depending on if you're a Bison fan or not. But the winner of that football game is in the driver's seat as far as playoffs go. The loser of that football game is behind the eight ball, even though both teams have a Power 5 win, and one of those teams will have a Power 5 win and a Top 10 FBS win. The other, of course, will have a loss on the flip side of that. So we will watch Northern Iowa today as well as far as scoreboard watching. I can't believe it's already begun. But that is <laughs> that's, 
That's part of the schedule right yeah. now, and that's part of playing big-time teams early in the season. Wins and losses matter. So far, North Dakota State starts out 2-0. and This is a big one for the Bison as well. This is a big one, and of course, the Bison versus the FBS. It's a uh, last it's five well. games. It's, it's been okay. Eight and three all time versus the FBS. That's that's incredible. Eight and three for an FCS school against the FBS. Five and zero oh in their last five games. Just some highlights of that that five game winning streak. Uh, the low scoring affair at Kansas. The <laughs> big, much higher scoring affair at Minnesota. The the game against Colorado State. That was a statement win if there ever was one. Twenty two to seven against the CSU team uh, in Fort Collins, Colorado. Obviously, the K-State game, I think fans will never forget that one. Yeah, uh, Brock Jansen, 16 plays. I think we all re remember that one for uh, Bison Faithful. And then uh, Carson Wentz's first ever start. They were down 14 nothing at Iowa State. The Bison come back, put 34 unanswered points up in that game. So it's not like the Bison um, are out of it by any stretch of the imagination, even though this Iowa team is far and away the best FBS team that North Dakota State will have played up to this point. It's it's uh, not going to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination, and this is a good Iowa team. Iowa beat Iowa State 42-3. to They beat Miami of Ohio 45-21. to But this is a very good football team. It is a very good Big Ten football team, a team that was right there until the end of last season. And all of a sudden, North Dakota State and Iowa... They are mere images of each other. What North Dakota State does well is what Iowa does well. They both want to run the football. They both want to play big physical defense. And this is going to come down to turnovers. It's going to come down to who's in shape. And it's going to come down to some of those intangibles, including who holds on to the football the longest, which is what North Dakota State loves to do. Time of possession will be big today. And uh, just one last thought. The two teams that Iowa has beaten... They both have losses to FCS teams. So uh, take what you will out of it. They're Iowa's good. Iowa's That's what good. you're trying to say. They're terrible. Iowa's good, but they've looked good against not-so-good competition. <laughs> but, okay, still to come today on the pregame show, Austin Kuhner is back in the lineup. We're going to hear from him. Plus, we'll hear from the guy who actually scheduled this game with Iowa and is now at Iowa. It's Gene Taylor, the former AD here. And we'll relive the day Tyler Roll went off against a Big Ten team Ooh, in 2007. We'll go beyond the game with the football family. Just lots to come still on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. Welcome you back inside the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. The Bison, uh, they've done all right so far this year. Obviously, the two wins, the two overtime wins, and their offense has not been terrible. Over 500 yards of offense last week, but they get a boost on the O line to. Today, Austin Cooner returns for the Bison. He's a 6'2", 302-pound junior. He brings a ton of experience back. He, he missed the first two games because of an academic suspension from the NCAA. What do you see Austin Cooner providing for this team? Well, he started 14 of 15 games last year for North Dakota State. The one game he missed was the game against South Dakota. And you know what happened in that game. He just brings... Well, this mindset to the offensive line and this work ethic to the offensive line that I don't know if they've been missing, but to have one extra guy with all of that experience coming back is absolutely huge. And it doesn't matter who's starting and who's not. It gives immediate depth and legit depth to the offensive line. It allows Tanner Volson to move around. It allows Jack Plankers to take a break. Bottom line, this football team is better with Austin Kuhnert on it and in the lineup than it is with him on the bench. It's huge. We got a chance to talk to Austin a little bit earlier in the week, and you'll hear from him in just a moment. But uh, Austin has said that he was doing everything that he could while he was on the sidelines to kind of help these guys and get them through what they were going through out there on the field. It's very difficult to be just a coach on the sidelines, if you will, if you're trying to be a player. But uh, he, he did what he could. and. Let's give credit where credit is due. Tanner Bolson, a fantastic mm. job filling in uh, for Austin. On short notice. Yeah, on very short notice. Uh, obviously, we didn't know about this suspension uh, to Austin, but Tanner Bolson did a fantastic job on this O-line. And this, as you said, just kind of gives the Bison another option on that O-line for to get some fresher legs in there from time to time. And don't forget, they're student athletes. Right. And Austin Kuhnert, very quick to say, he now realizes that one little slip up, one little thing, and your dream can be taken away from you. That's huge. That's a huge feeling inside of a football player, inside of a person to understand that all of a sudden everything you've worked for 
can be taken away because of one little mistake, because of one thing. And he had some off-the-field issues that he was dealing with. His grades slipped, and all of a sudden, being able to work back up, become the student in the student-athlete world was huge for him. And I agree with you. The job that the NDSU offensive line has done, although it's not pretty, right. <laughs> has been uh, better than maybe what you'd expect if just a, a day or two before the first game you find out that your starting center is going to be gone for the first two weeks. Uh, hats off to Tanner Volson, Jack Plankers, guys that had to step up. Yeah, so here is what Austin Kuhner had to say earlier this week, plus what Coach Climate says Austin gives to this offense. Just fell behind. Uh, just uh, had some personal issues that... Uh, didn't really go very well and uh, fell behind in school and definitely learned my lesson. Supplies him with so much versatility because he'll play center and he'll play guard and um, which spot he starts at, which spot he finishes at, we'll figure that out this week. But I think it'll it'll uh, maybe give some plays off to, to maybe Tanner, who's done a phenomenal job. Tanner Volson's played two really good football games, probably give a few plays off to either, either Jack or, or Zach inside. Um, so that we can be, you know, maybe a little bit more fresh uh, as the second half goes on. All right, so we'll, we'll get into a little bit about the rotation that the Bison do on the O-line in, in a little bit of time. But first, let's go back to the Eastern Washington game and the Code Green defense and, and their, I don't know if you want to call it struggles against Eastern Washington. I mean, Eastern Washington is going to get points, but this is just kind of how historic this game was. They gave up the 44 points, did, did NDSU. That's the most at home since 1955 mm. it's the most ever in the fargo dome <clears throat> excuse me in the fargo dome this was the the last time that the bison gave up more than 44 points october 15th 1955 it was a 45 28 loss to south dakota over at dakota field the 450 passing yards against that's the most since they were at sam houston state in 2009 and 556 total yards against it's a tough day for the bison we talked to a few of them and they said uh, this was more of a product of Eastern Washington getting their yards and their points versus what they think um, the Bison defense actually is. Now, we talked with Aaron Steidel earlier this week, and Steidel said the exact same thing. It is Eastern Washington, but he also said, you know, there are some things that we need to uh, fix and clean up and, and get, get going here for, for this week against Iowa. It's... It's a product of what Eastern Washington wanted to do against NDSU. It's a product of what NDSU was going to allow. They tried to take some things away, and I think even beyond the numbers, they did do some of that. But that opened up for very good wide receivers, and this quarterback just absolutely picked them apart. What NDSU did during this game, though, was they were able to grow. They were able to grow defensively. As, as terrible as that sounds and as weird as that sounds, <laughs> they were able to grow at defensive back, at safety, and they'll be better because of this game. This won't happen again, I don't think. You don't think 44 will happen again? I don't think 44 is going to happen again because... I mean, the last time it happened was only 50 years ago. So. Yeah. <laughs> North Dakota State prides itself on its defense. This one stings. This one hurts. You certainly know about that. All right. We're going to step aside. When we come back, we're going to hear from Gene Taylor, the former athletic director here at NDSU, now a deputy athletic director at Iowa. Plus, we'll uh, start breaking down the hot guys as we continue on here on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pre-Game Show. Just a short while ago, the Iowa Hawkeyes heading into their home, Kinnick Stadium, a place that has been very, very kind to them of late. Some big boys. Yeah, they're not bad. That's the uh, Iowa Beef Commission is what I like to call them. <laughs> and the Bison on the field getting ready for this game against the Iowa Hawkeyes at Kinnick Stadium. If you haven't been there, I tell you what, here is a live look at the stadium right now. It is something to see, and it is tight on the sidelines. Reminds you a lot of the Fargo Dome. Obviously, a few more seats than the Fargo Dome, and uh, not Stadium inside. Is huge. But it is a it is an awesome, awesome place to take in a football game. We welcome you back inside the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. Uh, this game was scheduled a, a few years back, and it was scheduled by a guy who didn't know what the implications of the scheduling would be, and that is former Bison athletic director Gene. 
Taylor. He is now a deputy athletic director at the University of Iowa, working underneath Gary Barta, a former Bison quarterback back in the D2 glory days for NDSU. Beth, who will have the opportunity to catch up with Gene just before, uh, just a little while ago, and here is what they had. Hey guys, that's right, a familiar face here. Gene Taylor joining us, the Deputy Athletic Director here at Iowa. Uh, what is, the day's finally here. You've been asked about this forever, I am sure. How's this feel? You know, it's been a lot of fun. I went out to West High and went through the parking lot, saw so many people I hadn't seen in a while, and they're you know just so welcoming. It's like I hadn't really left, but it's been fun, and I'm anxious for our fans to see the Indian Shoe fans and the Indian Shoe fans experience Kenny. It's going to be a great day. What's it been like for you being at Iowa and watching what you were a part of, what you helped start and build, just continue to flourish at North Dakota State? You know, it's it's about the people there. There was always so many good people that I got to come to work with every day, and it's just continuing, and it's a lot of fun. You know, you, you take a lot of pride in it, and you just know that the people are just, they work so hard to make that happen, and you enjoy it so much because you know how hard they're working, and to be a part of that and sit back now and watch it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It really is. And there's just so many quality people there that, that I'm not surprised at all. You mentioned quality people. You mentioned those relationships. Chris Kleiman. I mean, someone you had the opportunity to, to give a, the next opportunity and such a great, genuine guy. It has to be extra special. I know he's a good friend of yours. You know, he is. And I, I'll never forget that day in our, in my, that night in our living room when he was just so passionate. And I said, Chris, do you know the pressure you're going to walk into? He said, Gene, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to take it on. I don't think we knew he was going to win a national championship in his first year. I knew he would eventually. And to win two is just a phenomenal. That first year he was probably under more pressure than probably any coach that I've ever been around and they just flourished I'm very very proud of them you've been answering a lot of questions about North Dakota State about having this reunion but Gene how are you how are things going how is Iowa you know it's a lot of fun Iowa and maybe you've sensed it is very much like India shoe it's just bigger you know there's 70,000 versus 20,000 but the passion and the love for the Hawkeyes are just as deep and and it's in the quality of student athletes very similar you know they just good midwestern kids that work hard and Kirk's great our coaches are great it's just a bigger program so I'm not you know I don't have quite the quite the closeness as I did in North Dakota State but I'm good we love it my son's flourishing here as a high school senior my daughter's still at India Shoe, so they're wearing green and gold today by the way so there's no question who they're rooting for well I can tell Everybody's been asking. He does not have a green shirt underneath this. He is wearing white. There is no question he, he is here for the Hawkeyes. But I can't ask you for a prediction. But what do you hope comes out of this game for both of these universities? Well, certainly, we, I'm on obviously want a Hawkeye win because our goals, we need to have the win. But I really want North Dakota State. They're going to play well. It's going to be a good game. We know that. And after this loss, unfortunately, I hope they win the rest and everybody comes out of here healthy. More than anything, everybody comes out of here healthy. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Gene, so much for joining us. It's great to, it's see, you. to see you. Good All right, you. guys, Thanks. back to you. All right, thank you very much, Beth and Gene. Uh, it's good to hear from Gene Taylor. Oh, as he's so much respect for that guy. I had so many pregame conversations yeah. with Gene. Consider him a, a wonderful f friend. We text back and forth this week, and no doubt about it, he feels good inside and outside about this game and, and about this situation. And what a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything that I've gathered from him, uh, just just a genuine guy, yep. a guy that you uh, you like to have on your side. You notice that he did make a prediction there, though. He said NDSU was NDSU going to was lose. Gonna play well, and I said, well, and he said, said NDSU gonna was lose. going to play well. Yeah, but after this loss, I hope they win the rest of them. That's his prediction. I saw a picture on Twitter of Gene in that same outfit with his family, although Gene standing there with yeah, his family yeah. in bison shirts, and then Gene in his Iowa shirt was standing like this. Yeah. What does that mean? Once a bison, right? All right. Uh, we will. We will get to that in just a moment. But first, <laughs> let's start to break down this Iowa team. They are led at quarterback by senior C.J. Bether. These are his stats through the first two games. Uh, he's played some pedestrian defenses, if you will, and he's looked good, completing almost 67% of his passes. Uh, not a big running threat. No, but he doesn't turn the ball over. In 23 possessions, 12 touchdowns, one field goal. That's pretty good this year for the Iowa football team. But he played last year as well. The guy has been intercepted just two times in his last 226 throws. He does not make mistakes. And listen to this, Alex. I know it sounds awkward now, but this guy is going to get mentions when people start talking about the Heisman Trophy. He's that good. 
His numbers are fantastic now. Look at that, almost 70% of his throws he completes. And as the Hawkeyes roll into mid-October when that Heisman talk gets going, his numbers are just going to get better. This kid is good. He's real. You are seeing a live look at him warming up with the rest of the quarterbacks there at uh, Kinnick Stadium. Um, he, he is good. I watched the film of uh, his game against Iowa State, and uh, he, did, he did a good job. I, the things that I wrote down was poise, very much decision-making, and his ability to throw on the run. This play right here is actually a really good play action wheel route. We saw the Bison run a couple times to a, guy, throw it. to a guy that we'll talk about here in just a second. Uh, but he is good. He's thrown for over 4,000 yards in his career. He's got a good cast of characters around him. Vandenberg right there is, is one that uh, you're going to have to keep your eye on oh, if yeah. you're the Bison defense. And then there's the uh, one, the lone rushing touchdown, if you will, he, for C.J. Beathard. He just doesn't make mistakes. If NDSU can somehow get him to make a mistake or two, that's very uncharacteristic, and that's huge for what the Bison defense needs to do today. He doesn't make mistakes. If they can get him to make a mistake... Man, that's big. All right, so his cast of characters that he has around him, obviously he's got a pretty decent receiving core, but he also has this one-two punch of mm. running backs. Uh, we'll start by taking a look at LaShun Daniels, and he is something special. The senior, 225 pounds from Warren, Ohio. He has 25 carries this year, 195 yards on the ground, but look at that average of carry, nearly eight yards per carry. When I watched his, his game against uh, Iowa State, the two things I wrote down were speed and power. And the speed was a little bit uns unsuspecting yeah. of Iowa and Iowa fans because they called the dual threat at running back thunder and lightning. This was <laughs> the thunder. He was supposed to be the possession back, but his eight yards a carry, as you see there, that's 13th in the nation in average yards per carry. He's had a 43-yard touchdown in each of the first two games. And it got those three touchdowns. And then here's the, the lightning, if you will, mm -hmm. that they caught last year. It's Akram Wadley. He is a junior, a little bit lighter. Um, he has 21 carries, so just four carries less in the first two games uh, than um, the feature back, if you will, LaShun Daniels. This is like a 1A and 1B, if you will, for these two running backs. He's averaging over eight yards a carry. He also has three touchdowns this year. The two words that I wrote down for him was elusiveness and power. So they're both powerful running backs. How'd you spell elusiveness? I'm just... Probably incorrect. Yeah, I figured so. He leads the Big <laughs> Ten in a little over eight yards of carry. A little bit of showboat to him, as you saw yep. right there. No doubt about it. Iowa wants to run the football. They want to control the temple. To do that, they have to be able to run. They are 10th in the nation in rushing. They average over six yards a pop among their three or four running backs and the quarterback combined. No doubt about it, though. It's Daniels. It's Wadley. We'll see plenty of them today. NDSU, you've got to be able to, to try to bottle them up to have some success. Yeah, these guys do. They just, they just get their, their yards and they get their carries. And again, they've played not so great defense. I don't think they've played a code green defense, but... Not this year. This is also a code green defense that's coming off of giving up 44 points. Not to, not to beat a dead horse by any means. Okay, we're going to step aside. Uh, when we come back, we will uh, go beyond the game with a couple guys on the Bison football roster. They're brothers, a football family. The pregame show rolls on. This is the Farmers Union Insurance Bison football pregame show. We've heard Bison football players and coaches refer to the program as family. This week, we go beyond the game with Bison football players who are actually family. I caught up with the Tuska brothers this week. Older brother Jared is a defensive end, and younger brother Derek, also a defensive end. Which of you two is the better athlete? Me for sure. You for sure, why is that? I don't know, I've been doing it two years longer than him, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. I like to think I'm the older one, a little better looking, a little better athlete. Do you, you agree with that? No. Why? Why not? All right. All he does is lie. <laughs> that, that's that's a lie. Um, yeah, we've always been competing, so I'd I'd say I'm the better better athlete because I'm trying to keep up with him all the time. So very good. So I'll you set him. the bar, and then he. he I I have to top it. Yeah. Okay. Which of you two is the favorite child of your parents? That's me. That's Why? Derek, for sure. Uh, I was always getting in trouble growing up. 
I was always kind of the bad seed, always in the principal's office for something. Um, I don't know, just the one that experienced everything first and got to mess it up first. So, <laughs> I, so learned, I learned from his mistakes. There so. you go, yeah. yeah. Very good. You have to answer for, for your brother here, okay? Kay. What is his best quality? Well, it used to be his hair until he cut it off. <laughs> oh, those girls were all about that. The long, curly, curly hair. Um, I don't know, I think his personality. Fun, easy to get along with. Been hanging around him for a while and don't ever get bored. Very good. Definitely his personality. Anybody can get along with him. Uh, yeah, it's fun to be around. Always entertaining you, so. Cool, all right, so as brothers, I'm sure you guys share some things, so what is something that you guys will, will share amongst each other? Oh, we pretty much share everything. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it is. Okay, then to follow that up, what is something you absolutely won't share with each other? A lot of the times it's food. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing growing up, I'd always, we'd always go someplace to eat, and I'd ask him if he wants something to eat, or if I could get him something, and he'd be like, oh, no, I don't want anything to eat, and whatever I get, he's got to try it, and he's got to eat some of it, and that would just drive me crazy. I was told to ask you guys what it was like for your mom when you guys were both on the field at the same time. I don't know. I guess we didn't really ask her. She said, she has kind of said it was tough because she didn't know who to watch. Um, she was excited. Yeah, they're pretty happy, pretty proud. The Tuska brothers. That's me. Jared has played in uh, 23 games as a junior. He's only got six total tackles in his career and just one pass defended. He's seen a little bit more playing time this year. And uh, Derek played in last week's game against Eastern Washington, and that was, of course, the first time that they were on the field together in Bison uniforms. Cool. Pretty cool. That was Football cool. is family. All right, when we come back, we're going to uh, walk down memory lane. This one is fun. Back to 2007 when we return here on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. North Dakota State and Iowa about 15 minutes away from kickoff. And the great thing about these games is someone usually emerges as a superstar. Think Brock Jensen in the drive at K-State. Think Carson Wentz at Iowa State. Well, we caught up with a former Bison who not only took over but absolutely dominated a game in Minnesota in 2007. Here's Once a Bison. Tyler, you played in that transitional year, those transitional years where NDSU was making that leap to Division I, and I would say arguably your best game as a Bison came on October 20th, 2007 at the Metrodome in Minneapolis playing the Gophers. And it was a, uh, if you didn't know Tyler Roll's name at that point as a fan, you certainly knew it after that game. Let's set this up. Your team is down. Seven to nothing. Seven to nothing. It is your first possession yep. of the football game. Uh, Twelve minutes in. Uh, Twelve minutes to go. First quarter, and uh, all of a sudden there's some electricity. Let's set this thing up. It's okay. at the 22-yard line. Okay. And uh, you come out of the backfield. Okay. Steve Walker. I forget the... if we were in shotgun or what we were doing. I think it was shotgun. Okay. So Steve Walker uh, gets the snap. Okay. And then it's a little screen pass over to you. So Walker throws it to you. You catch the ball. And to me, it's so amazing how fast you got up to speed. Yeah. Because by the time you got back to the line of scrimmage, you were ahead of steam. But what did you see at this point? You know, it's a screen pass. So we had Polars getting out in front. Okay, and then uh, Cole Heckendorf was out on the perimeter, and he was responsible for the corner. And I just, there was some flow coming. Okay, and I, and I think it was a safety, uh, front side strong safety, who was uh, coming at me and got a piece of me. Okay, yeah, you break a tackle. And then I break right a here. tackle. And then all of a sudden, it's green grass. So then you start rolling, all right? And then uh, we st I start hauling, uh, get going, and then the backside safety, you could kind of perif him. Yeah. Okay? You could kind of perif him, but then, you know, it starts getting louder and louder. That's awesome. Louder and louder. And we're rolling. I mean, there's 60,000 people yeah. there. So that was, yeah. it was a pretty cool deal. Um, so then we just, you know, I'm heading up the, the numbers. and You break one more tackle. Break one more tackle. Uh, sideline, right? Yeah, and then... The rest is history. So you talked a little bit about the sound, but explain that a little bit more. When you're running, are you feeling the noise or the sound or what's going through your head? Besides trying to score, you're getting faster and faster. I think once you 
once I kind of probably got to about the 40, um, you could kind of tell that something was, something good was happening. Cause I didn't, you know, I really didn't know, uh, you know, where I was on the field or what was going on. But then, you know, once you break a tackle and you just see all that uh, green grass, you know, and you feel like, hey, it's going to be a touchdown on the third play of the game. That's pretty cool. You almost get cut. There's this yep. defensive back. He's number nine. He shows yep. up a couple of times yep. in the highlights. But you almost get caught as you're going towards the goal line. Yep. Did you feel that? Kind of. Like I said, I, I could perif him. I felt him a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, he got a swing at my legs, you know, and just scored the touchdown. It goes 77 yards for the touchdown. A little bit later in the half, though, you have another big run. Yep. This time you get it and you go right up the middle. Yep. This is a big play at the trap time. Trap play. Yeah, it was a trap play. And uh, this was know, a little more open right now. It was open. So I hugged the, the block of the center. Okay, and then wide open again. So I just go right to the sideline. Okay, because I, I the green grass take it backside right now. So I started running. Uh, and the play before I actually fumbled. Okay, ah. I, I fumbled the series before. And uh, then I looking up at the 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 video screen, okay, Don Barber. I could see him, you know, catching up behind. So then I just, hey, squeeze the ball high and tight, and then he caught me from behind. Yeah, you did get caught. Number nine shows up in that yep, picture right, as well. Right. You burn him down the sideline. Biggest day in your career, biggest plays in your career, because you had some special ones, but this is Minnesota on the road. You're 6-0, and ready to go 7-0. and Where's this rank for you? It's got to be at the top, you know, to, to get a start like that, in an environment like that at the Metrodome, uh, it's pretty special. You know, you, you go down seven nothing uh, after the first series, and then you know to, to get out there and score again, uh, it was pretty special. And then just the momentum that gave our offense, the confidence it gave our team uh, to go out there and compete with with a Big Ten team was was pretty special. Twenty two rushes, two hundred and sixty three yards. Wow. Yeah, that yeah, was, you know, I, I remember doing an, inter an interview after the game, and yeah, there was a bunch of people, and they told me that. I had no idea. I had no idea that uh, that, that was the going to be the school record and uh, that I had that many yards. And then you show up on Sports Center that night, you get a sticker on the helmet. It was yeah. pretty special. Yeah, it was cool, you know, and uh, to get all the, the messages, the letters, in regards to that game, it was, looking back, it really kind of put us on the national map. It really did, and, uh, you know, to get the, the ESPN sticker and then USA Today player of the, of the week was pretty cool. Epitomizes what Bison football has certainly become. Smack them in the mouth and, right. and just keep running harder and harder. Right. Tyler Roll, once a bison? Always a bison. Always a bison. <laughs> oh, those are fun. <laughs> oh, for a big guy, Tyler Roll could certainly run those 263 yards from scrimmage. Still a school record for North Dakota State. His 35 career touchdowns ranks him eighth all time for the herd. That was uh, fun putting that one together. All right, we're going to go to uh, Ask Gellner right now. Uh, this is your chance to get involved in the show. First off, Here's our question this week. Explain how the Bison rotate offensive linemen certain number of plays or when a break is needed. Thanks to at Magic Morley for this one, Ryan. Well, the rotation on the offensive line, it's pretty rare, and it goes against conventional wisdom where continuity is what you strive for. But somehow it's worked for NDSU. There's a rhyme and a reason for it. NDSU has the talent, first of all, to tinker with their O-line as the game goes on. It's a hard adjustment for the defense because it makes it difficult to identify just those small advantages and those tendencies that defensive look for. Then you rotate two or three guys in, it throws that out the window. As far as when to rotate, NDSU a little bit unpredictable. They love to keep guys fresh. They rotate a series here and there. They also love to give their players many coaching sessions on the sidelines. Defensively, though, for NDSU, it's all about getting off blocks and 
getting to the football. Fresh legs, fresh bodies, those are the keys and those are the reasons that NDSU has been so good at rotating guys both offensively and defensively. All right, thank you very much. And you have your chance to get involved. Tweet us your questions to at BNL Sports. Use the hashtag AskGelner and then tune in next week. See if your question gets answered. We'll step aside, get you the injury report, and uh, get you back out to Kinnick Stadium as we're uh, it's coming. close to football time. It's coming. Free game show continues on. Almost time for football. Let's get the injury report. We'll take a look at uh, some of the guys that will be missing today or are listed on the injury report. Nick DeLuca with the shoulder injury. We saw him play last week. Nick DeLuca with the shoulder injury. He is warming up. We are hearing from some sources away from Bison football that this injury may be more significant than we first thought. Now, with that said, expect Nick to play today, but... Beyond that, there are some sources saying that this is one we should watch. All right. King Fraser with the ankle. He's probably going to play. RJ Erzendowski with an upper leg injury is what we're calling it. That's what you called it. <laughs> I call it a backside injury. A backside injury. Robbie Grimsley with a concussion. All those guys are warming up, and they are all expected to play. Let's get out to Kinnick Stadium with Beth standing by with Dr. Bruce Pyatt. Beth. Hey guys, we're here for our Sanford Orthopedic Sports Medicine Injury Report. I'm joined by Dr. Pyatt. First road trip of the season. What are some of the things you try and remind the guys about before they go on the road? Some of those things just to, to stay healthy with all of the moving and going they have going on. Well, you know, we've been fortunate this year that we've gotten a couple weeks under our belt, so we've allowed them to do the conditioning they need to do from a game situation. That helps a lot for them. When, you had to, when we had to do it first thing last year in Montana, a little different story. But it's, it's really, we try to keep things as close to their normal routine as we can. We try to allow them to have the same amount of rest. We try to allow them to have the same type of food and diet that they're going to get at home and have it really spread out around the same time intervals leading up to the game. Then as we get into the game, you know, it's our job to really remind them, particularly in a venue like this, where they're going to be really amped up initially until they get uh, you know down the road a little bit into the game we've really got to keep on them to hydrate from from that moment we get going they're hydrating on the way to the game they're hydrating in between uh you know warm-ups and as we get started but we're going to really be reminding them of those things as we go and what about the teamwork that goes in you're coming into another team's facility uh an, another room another you know training facility what what's some of the partnership that goes on between the universities it's really nice uh, for us. Most of the places we play have top-notch um, training staffs, have top-notch physicians that work with them. So we get really quality care almost everywhere we go. Now, obviously, this is a step up in the Big Ten. That makes it a little bit easier. But uh, Bobby and the training staff and all the conditioning and strength people, they've been working all week with the University of Iowa people to make sure that we have everything we'll need here. We prepared looking at weather reports and things, looking for humidity and heat and what we're going to need. We brought in our own fans to cool the kids down. So we feel like we're prepared. We have things prepared if somebody gets in trouble, if we need IVs. All that stuff's been prepared ahead of time. It's easy to get access to and we're ready to go. Game day starts a long time ahead of time for you guys. Um, well, thanks so much, Dr. Pyatt. We appreciate you joining us for the Sanford Orthopedic Sports Medicine Injury Report. This is the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. Three minutes to kick off. Let's get back out to Kinnick Stadium and Beth will stand by with Bison head coach Chris Kleiman. All right, thanks, guys. Coach Kleiman, it's here game day, your first road trip. How did the preparation go leading into this one? Well, we had a great week of practice, and uh, we know this is going to be a tough uh, environment in here, but I think it's going to help us moving forward. I know our guys are ready to play, and we'll see if we can hold up up front. That's a big challenge is the first two opponents they've had, offense, defensive line, they've just dominated. So uh, that's a challenge to our guys. Can we can we last for four quarters? And what do you say to your team as you prepare for this one? Sure, last last it and put up a good fight early, but, but what's the lasting message on this one as you take the field? Uh, that we belong. And that's what uh, they have to know. And I think they really feel, feel it and believe it that we do belong. I know the guys that have played an awful lot of football uh, know they belong, but some of those other guys that this is their first real test uh, in a big environment uh, that uh, just play each play one at a time uh, for 60 minutes and uh, see what we can do. Well, best of luck, Coach. Thanks for joining us, guys. Back to you. 
Thank you very much, Beth and Coach. They want to feel like they belong. We I think belong. That they belong. Yes. Yeah, time for our Bobcat heavy lifting report. We went with junior defensive end Greg Menard this week. Uh, the Bison didn't really get to Gage Guru too much last week. You got to get to C.J. Beathard this week and disrupt him. Yeah, you could add Brad Ambrosius to the list as well. That's yeah. the thing. Get to the quarterback, force mistakes. That's going to be crucial if the Bison are going to be successful on defense today. Let's get to our keys to the game. And uh, we talked about the penalties in the open. 13 of them for 137 yards last week. Ah, not good. You need to match up physically. That goes into what Coach Kleiman was just saying. Yeah. You need to feel like we belong. Yeah, you, you do have to be that way. NDSU has the bigger offensive line. Iowa has the bigger defensive line. Back to clean up penalties. Only 13 teams in the FCS have more penalties than the Bison. Oh. And then the last one, just get better. Get better play after play. That's the big time goal here. As the game gets on, the team has to get better. 13 teams? That 13 teams not the worse stat than NDSU. That is not the stat list that you they want. They average 103 penalty yards a game. That has to get cleaned up big time. We may be able to show you, if we have the QB comparison, let's just show you what Easton Stick does or has done this year. And he's a good, he's a good quarterback. 17 uh, completions last week to, on 27 pass attempts. Uh, Easton Stick will be crucial for the, uh, the Bison's success this week. Well, his passing See? numbers keep going up. His offensive numbers keep going up. Last week, 121 yards better than his average was mm. over the last season and handful of games. They He's are going better. to run the football today. I have a feeling that the football will yeah. be run. We will not see, you know, 45 pass attempts from either team today. That's a problem for one team if we see 45 <laughs> passing attempts. Yes, that means they're, they're trying that to play does. catch up. All right, that's going to do it for us here on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. The game on ESPN2 kicks off right now. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.